Let's say God bless you. To those of you who logged in, you've logged in the Strong Tower Apostolic Ministries Incorporated, located at 713 North J.P. Wright Loop Road. I want to say God bless you to my family in Chicago, Texas County, Arkansas, Texas County, Texas, Sherwood, Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, McNeil, Arkansas, all over the great United States. Thank God for allowing us to be here on tonight. This is our Bible class. God bless you, Brother Hall, up there in Pennsylvania, uh, PA. We hope and pray that all is well for you up there. And God is keeping you and blessing you and prospering you. We miss you. We love you. And may God continue to keep his arms of mercy around about you. We pray for you and your family. Uh, we thank God for everybody that's here on tonight. Everybody say it's time for the word. Time for the word. Time for the word. Amen. Well, it's Bible class night, and we're coming out of Genesis chapter number 31. Now, I apologize to my viewers out there. I'm only given an option to either broadcast my image or broadcast the scriptures. And so tonight I'm going to broadcast my image rather than the scriptures. Uh, so just bear with us as we go through this. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and read through chapter 31 and then we'll expound on it. So let's go to blueletterbible.org and we'll read through Genesis chapter number 31. Genesis chapter 31. Chapter 31. And he heard the words of the one son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our fathers, and the left which was our fathers hath become all this glory. Jacob beheld the countenance of the Lord, and behold, it was not more him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to my kindred, and I will be with thee. Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not for me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me, and ye know that with all my power I have served your father. Your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled, and if he said thus, the ring strength shall be thy fire, then bear all the cattle ring strength. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes, and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring strength, speckled and grizzled. The angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see. All the lambs which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and grizzled. So I have seen all that the Lord doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us, and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours, and our children. Now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up, and sent his sons and his wives upon the cattle. And he carried away all his cattle, and all his goods which he had got, the cattle of his kin, which he had gotten in Manadaran, for he drove to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled, and he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey. He overtook him in the Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob hath pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters, as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me? And didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with words, with songs, with temper, and with honor. But hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt, but the God.
shall in no father speak of me as to my saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob of a good old man. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my God? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure, thou wouldest take by force thy daughter's from me. With whosoever thou findest thy God, let him not live. For our brethren discern thou what is thy with me, and take it to me. But Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen And the one went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maid servants' tent, but he found them none. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And the Laban searched all the tents, but found them none. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. And Jacob was wrong, and chose with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Whereas thou hast searched all my sons, what hast thou found of all thy household sons? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not. That which was told of beasts I brought not unto thee, I bear the Lord. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was, in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. But have I been twenty years in thy house? I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac has been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God has seen my affliction, and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Balaam answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children. These cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children, which they have born? Now therefore come now, let us make a come, I and thou, and let us be for a witness between me and thee. Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jacob Seyalupa. But Jacob called it him. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore, what the name of it called, gave thee. And this part, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee, when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me, O God. The God of Abraham, and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount, and told his brethren to eat bread, they did eat bread and carry it all night in the mount. And early in the morning, Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. Chapter 32. All right, now we see what's going on here, right? How many years did Jacob serve? Fourteen years for the two daughters. What are their names? Leah and Rachel. And how many years for the cattle? Six years. 14 plus six makes? 20 years. So Jacob has served his uncle Laban 20 years. And God talked to him and said, it's time to go home now. Now, when he left, he was running from who? Remember the story? He had just deceived his dad and stolen whose birthright? Esau's birthright. So he left in a turmoil, didn't he? Esau was determined to kill him. But God said, it's time to go home now. 20 years have passed. You have prospered working for your uncle Laban. Now it's time to go home. But notice that he did not leave until God told him. 
He stayed there 20 years. He said, and he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he taken, hath he gotten all this glory. So they saw how wealthy Jacob had become through working for their, their dad. So they became a little jealous. Wow, he's taking our inheritance. This stuff is ours. How can Jacob come in here who is our cousin or brother, our sister's children, our cousin, first cousins basically, and leave with all this stuff? So Laban's children got a little envious, a little jealous. Can you see it? And know that they're like, whoa, have taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's have he gotten all this glory. Verse 2, and Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and, to and behold, it was not toward him as before. All right, go back to the other one. Countenance, what is countenance? He beheld his countenance, his appearance, and he was wondering like, well, He's not happy toward me anymore. He's a little bitter, a little angry. His countenance has changed. His behavior has changed. Comes from the Hebrew word panim. Strong's page 6440. Panim. Panim. Cassius lexicon. Penueo. Penueo. Second entry. Penueo. Okay, and it means his face. Face or faces, his presence, the person, uh, face of animal service, before, behind, toward, in front of, forward, formally, from before time before. His face changed. Do you know some people's face changed when they got to pay you? You may have worked for somebody out there before that when it came time to pay, they didn't want to pay you. I have. I've worked some, for some people before who had a hard time paying me. I did a hard day's work, but they didn't want to pay for a hard day's work. I've worked for some people before who told me they were going to pay me one thing, but when it came down to paying, they did something else. That's called a lie, isn't it? or deception. And this is what Jacob went through. His uncle had changed his wages how many times? We just read it. See why we got to expound on it? Because it goes in one ear and out the other, doesn't it? He explained, changed his wages 10 times. Told him I'm going to pay you one thing, but then when it came time to pay, he did something else. Told him I'm going to do this for you this time, then when it came time to pay, he did something else. Changed his wages 10 times. And it wasn't because Jacob did a bad job. It's because his uncle was deceitful. Now, if I had worked all day long and did a bad job, I deserved less pay. I even may have deserved to be fired if I did a bad job. But it wasn't the case with Jacob. He served his uncle, Laban, with all his heart. And when you do a good job, give it 100%, you should be rewarded for doing a good job and giving it. 100% doing your best. But his uncle had deceived him. Now we know that Jacob had deceived his dad, right? So he was reaping it, wasn't he? He was reaping what he had sown. When you do evil, you reap evil. When you deceive others, you reap deception. When you treat others bad, you reap bad treatment. It what goes around comes around. That's the way the world puts it. But God says, well, the word of God says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man or woman soweth, that shall he or she also reap. What we do comes back on us. So we have to be careful, don't we? So Jacob is going through. But now it says in verse 3, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and thy kindred, or to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. So Jacob had a relationship with God, didn't he? God's talking to him. When's the last time God talked to you like that? He didn't say much, did he? But he said, it's time to go back home. 
Esau's not mad anymore. Esau don't want to kill you anymore. It's been 20 years. He's forgiven you. You've been gone 20 years and they miss you. They want to see you. He doesn't want to hurt you anymore. He's forgiven you. But God had prepared Esau's heart not to do that. So God knew what was going on. So he says, return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred. So when God tells you to do something or go somewhere, you've got to go if you want to please him. And Jacob had established a relationship or fellowship with God. And that's what we're all trying to get on me. Lord, use me like that. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me like that. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear you tell me to go and to come and where to go and where to come. Speak to me like that, Lord. Make it clear to me. Isn't that beautiful? Jacob, even though he wasn't perfect, God is still speaking to him. Are you perfect? Am I perfect? No, I'm not. But God is still using me. And I thank him for his mercy. I thank him for his grace. I thank him for his compassion. I thank him for not giving up on me. Aren't you glad he doesn't give up on us because we're not perfect? He didn't give up on Jacob because Jacob wasn't perfect. Did he? So we thank God for being merciful. Verse, verse 5, or verse 4, And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock. And he said unto them, I see your father's countenance, his face. Is not toward me as it was before, as before. But God of my father, who is his father? What was Jacob's father name? Isaac. Isaac, the God of Isaac, my father, had been with me. Is he lying or telling the truth? He's telling the truth. God has been with him. Don't you want God to be with you? So that can be your testimony. God has been with me. God has blessed me. God has encouraged me. God has strengthened me. God has been on my side all this time. I know I did wrong, but he forgave me. He delivered me, and he's blessed me. And now he says it's time to go home. So wives, let's pack up our stuff and let's go. What do the wives do? I ain't leaving, Daddy. You done lost your mind. I'm staying here with daddy with all these cattle and all this men. I ain't going nowhere with you. You just a deceiver. You just a wrong man. She, they didn't act like that, did they? His wives came out to him and they said, And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. In other words, I gave him 100% for you. I served him the best I could. Verse 7. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me physically. He wanted to hurt me physically, but God didn't let him do it. He saw how God was prospering me, and it came into his heart to hurt me, but he didn't let it hurt me. He just changed my wages. He just tricked me. He deceived me. Now, he got deceived ten times more than what he deceived his brother Esau, didn't he? See, sometimes when we reap it, we reap it, reap it ten times more. But I thank God for his mercy that he doesn't punish us the way we deserve. But Jacob got ten times more deception than what he did for his brother Esau. So God punished him, didn't he? See, God will punish us. He'll whoop us and spank us, but he'll still forgive us. But just because he forgives us doesn't mean he's not going to chastise us. So this was a form of chastisement for Jacob. He lied, didn't he? He deceived his daddy. He tricked his daddy. And now he's been tricked ten times. Verse 8. If he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckle. But he had something to do with that, didn't he? He set up the world's painted ring strings he set up the last time, and it worked. I guess God showed him how to do it. <laughs> I wonder if that will work today. And it said, if all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said, if thus ring straight, then they hire, then they bear cattle straight. They bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God, see, he keeps bringing God in it, doesn't he? 
Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. Even though he deceived me and tricked me those ten times, God paid me. God blessed me. God blessed me to overcome deception. God blessed me to overcome being tricked. God blessed me to overcome being done wrong. So if we trust in God, he'll bring you through. He can bring you through deception. He can bring you through being treated wrong if you just trust in him. Verse 10. And it came to pass that the cattle conceived, and I lifted up my eyes, and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring struck, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see, all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban, or Laban, doing unto thee. See, God's watching out when people are mistreating us. God's watching. He sees what people are doing to you and what he's doing to me. You just got to keep the right attitude. You just got to keep the right behavior. If I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battle. Hold your peace. Lord, help us to hold our peace so that you will fight these battles for us. It is a great example of how God fought the battle for them. And he goes on to say, verse 13, I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest the vow unto me. See, God heard that vow. I heard that vow. I heard you make that promise. You promised if you go into this land and I keep you and bring you out that you pay a tithe to me. Jacob made that vow, remember? And God heard that vow. So when you make a vow to the Lord, don't think he's not listening. He expects you to do what you said you were going to do. Don't make a foolish vow. If you don't intend to, to, to pay that vow, don't say it. Nobody's making you say that, is it? So God will hold you to it when you say something. Give him a vow. You think you just speak it into the air, but God is hearing you. He said, I heard that vow you made, and I kept you. I blessed you, and now I'm bringing you home. So don't forget to pay your tithe. Don't forget. You said you were going to do it. Now do it, right? I heard the vow. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered, You just a, you, you, you lying? God ain't talk to you. Why God gonna talk to you? Do you know some wives talk to their husbands like that? They do. They don't believe nothing their husband has to say. Some wives will go just the opposite of what the husband and God is trying to lead him to do. Some wives, some women, not all of them, but is that what Rachel and Leah did? They did not talk to their husband disrespectfully. They said, and Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? We are counted of him strangers, for he has sold us. He sold us, you worked for us. So you bought us. It, it's almost like we're slaves to my dad. He used you to buy us. We know what happened. You had to work seven years for us. That's like slavery. You was a slave for us for seven years. He sold us. That's the truth of the matter, isn't it? If you want my daughter Courtney, you got to work for me seven years for free. I just used my daughter as a, as a selling device, didn't I? As a, as a merchandise. I sold her. I didn't give her away. That's why when you give your, your children away, it says you give you away. I give you away in holy matrimony. I'm not selling you. I'm giving you away. That's a difference, isn't it? When I say to my other daughter, if you want my other daughter, you've got to work for me seven years for free if you want to marry her. Well, something wrong with me, isn't it? I'm selling my daughters, and their daughters, they, they admitted it, didn't they? He sold us. He didn't give us away to you in holy matrimony. He was supposed to provide the wedding by being our dad and give us away and walk us down the aisle. But no, he used us as merchandise. So they were upset. They were offended by what their dad did, weren't they? Let's read it one more time. Are we not counted of him strangers 
For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. He sold us. He used us for merchandise so he could get rich, have you working for nothing. They told the truth, didn't they? For all the riches which God had taken from our father, it, that is ours, and our children, children. Now then, whatsoever God had said unto thee, do it. They encouraged him, didn't they? Do it. Go ahead, husband, honey. Go ahead, husband. Do what God called you to do. I got your back. I'm devoted to you. I'm encouraging you. I'm interested. They, they encouraged him. But couldn't they have took him, taken their dad's side and say, no, don't you go. We ain't going nowhere with you, Jacob. We stand with dad. They could have taken that attitude, couldn't they? But no, they took their husband's side. What God told you to do, you do it. That's encouragement. A husband needs encouragement from a wife. He doesn't need her being negative. He needs her encouragement. Now what did Jacob do? I ain't going nowhere. Then Jacob arose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. That was like the limousine back then. He gave them the limousine to ride. <laughs> the camel. You ride the camel through the desert, wife. I'm treating you special. And my sons too. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in Pandanaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to share his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. Now that's where the sin came into the camp. Rachel didn't have a heart to serve Jacob's God. Rachel had a heart to serve her father's God. Even though she was on Jacob's side and she wanted to leave with him, it wasn't in her heart to serve our God. She still worshiped idols, her father's idols. And now trouble is coming into the camp. Don't bring trouble into the camp. Amen? Don't bring trouble into the camp. And says, and, and, and Jacob stole away. Look how they keep using the word stole. Because that's what Laban felt in his heart. He's still in my daughters. He's still in my cattle. He's still in all this stuff. That's what he felt in his heart. So they keep using the word stole. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban Le the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled. He's running again. He was running from Esau when he went to Laban. Now he's running from Laban going back to Esau. <laughs> So God really spanked him, didn't he? We reap what we sow. He was running to get to Laban. Now he's running back home away from Laban. <laughs> That's kind of humorous, isn't it? Verse 21. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. Verse 22. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. He got three days of running. He got to run three days before Levon, Levon realized he was gone. Three days journey. Now, if we were in a car driving for three days, we'd be in California by now, wouldn't we? But he's three, like, three days walking on camels. They don't have cap cars and automobiles, so he wouldn't be 2,000 miles away. He may be at most 100 miles away if they walk 20 or 30 miles a day. And he took his brethren with him and pursued. See, it's like he's chasing him, isn't it? Pursued after him seven days. It took him seven days and they overtook him in the Mount of Gilead. Look at how they're using the word overtook. He had other intentions, didn't he? He wasn't going to let Jacob go with all that stuff. His uncle had other intentions. And God had to step in the picture. Look at that, verse 24. And God, everybody say, and God. God. And God came to Laban. Now, Laban didn't worship God. He worshiped idols, remember? Rachel stole his idols. So God can talk to anybody. He talked to an idolater. He talked to a man that didn't worship him. He talked to Laban. And God came to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night, and said unto him, To him, that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. He 
talk to them in a dream. Don't say nothing good, don't say nothing bad. Don't put your mouth on Jacob. Now God can talk to anybody. Can he? He's God. Verse 25. And Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban his, with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done that thou hast stolen away on a man? See, he used the word stolen. He wants to tell him, you stole this stuff. I didn't give it to you. You stole it. You stole my daughter. He's trying to, he wants to say it so bad. You thief. <laughs> but God has told him, don't you say nothing bad or nothing good. You just talk to him. So the man's careful with his words. He wants to call him a thief, though. Can you see it? Thou hast stolen away. So if you stop right there, you'd be like, thou hast stolen but then he said, oh, we are unawares, which was true. He did sneak off, didn't he? And to me, and carried away my daughters as captives, taken with swords. That's what he wants to say. He wants to fight so bad. Can you see it? Can you see the emotions here? He's angry. Wherefore didst thou flee secretly and still away? Use the word still again. He wants to call Jacob a thief so bad. But because God talked to him that night, he's careful with his words. Don't you know it's good to be careful with your words? Thank you, Jesus. That's my topic tonight. Be careful with your words. Be careful with your words. And let Laban has to be careful. Still away from me. He wants to say he stole all this stuff from me. But he's careful with his words, isn't he? Because God told him, you better be careful. Don't say good, don't say bad. You be careful with what you say. That I might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs and with temperance and with heart, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. See, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to hurt him so bad. He wants to kill Jacob. It's in my power to kill you. But, everybody say, but God. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Thou take heed, be careful, that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Be careful what you say to him. Verse 30. And now, Though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? Now he can use the word thief, can he? You stole my gods, Jacob. Which is true. The gods were stolen. His images, his idols were stolen, weren't they? Now next time we'll see how Jacob responds. We'll stop here for tonight. So we thank you all for logging in. We hope and pray that something has been said tonight that will encourage you to be careful with your words. Be careful how you speak. Be careful. Everybody say, be careful. Be careful. What you say. Precious Father, we thank you for your word on tonight. Help us to watch what we say to one another. Help us to be careful with what we say. You are concerned with the things and the words we use on one another. You told him to be careful, to take heed in what he spoke. So Lord, we all take that heed. We all take that warning to be careful what we speak. We love you, we honor you, we adore you, and we praise your name. Bless those who are viewing right now. Lord, have mercy on them. Give them a mind to want to be saved, to get baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Thank you for viewing. And as always, we are expecting our great God to do great things for us. Great power and great grace. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Thank you for viewing.